Now we are solving a problem here in this video. The problem says identical rods. The problem says identical rods. When somebody say identical rods, it means to say it this resistance is same for all of them. Their length is same. Their area of cross section is same. Their coefficient of thermal conductivity. All these parameters are same. That's a given condition. It is given that there are multiple rods. Uh, you can see how many rods are there. One, two, three, four, five. There are six rods. Temperatures are given for you at one end. Temperature is given as 20. At the other end, temperature is given as 200. That means heat obviously flows from place of higher temperature to lower temperature. So heat flows from left to right. Now, how does that heat flows? As this is a hot place, heat starts from here. After reaching the junction, it splits across this 2 and 4. Whatever that came through 2 will go through 3. Whatever came to 4 will go to 5. At the junction, the 3 and 5 heats will join together and becomes the same heat. That means the rate of flow of the heat dQ by dt is constant is not wasted as per the law of conservation of energy. But if you notice carefully, whatever the dq by dt that passed through 2, that is this one, is same passed to 3, dq by dt passed to 3. When heat passed is same, it means to say that rod 2 is in series with rod 3. Same is the case of 4 and 5. Rod 4 is in series with rod 5. When they are in series, we know resistance in series is similar to electric resistance. Thermal resistance is also R1 plus R2. Both are R. So the resistance of that combination is 2R. So, we can rewrite our uh, diagram as this diagram can be rewritten as this is R. Instead of this R and this R, I can write 2R. Instead of this R and this R, I can write another 2R. And again, there is R. Of course, here the temperature is 200 degrees centigrade. Here the temperature is 20 degrees centigrade. We can very clearly notice these two R and this two R are in parallel. When the two thermal resistors are in parallel, in parallel, 1 by R parallel equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. That is 1 by R1 is 2 R, R2 is also 2 R. So 2 R is LCM. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 by 2 R, 2 and 2 will cancel, that is 1 by R. That implies 1 by R parallel equal to 1 by R, that implies R parallel equal to R itself. Now I can again redraw this equation, diagram as 1 is R, instead of this 2 R and 2 R, I can draw only 1 R, as I have proved that. And there is of course one more R, here the temperature is 200 degrees centigrade. Here the temperature is 20 degrees centigrade. So what we can notice is there is three rods equivalent circuit. Each of thermal resistance are across them. The temperature that has to be shared is 200 minus 20. That is 80, sorry, 180 degree centigrade. So, you know, if you remember back in series, dq by dt is equal to delta theta by r, right? So, as r is same, or I can say, in series, what we can say? Yeah, I can say this way also, as, as r is same, and dq by dt is same in series, Delta theta across each rod 
has to be same. That means delta theta 1 across this, delta theta 2 across this, delta theta 3 across this shall be same. Delta theta 1, delta theta 2, delta theta 3 shall be the same. But you know the total delta theta between the first and last is 180. That has to be shared across three parts equally. 1, 2, 3. So how can I share that into three parts? It has to be 60 degrees, 60 degrees and 60 degrees. That means each rod shall have a temperature difference of 60 degree, 60 degree and 60 degree. That means how do you draw the diagram? Rod 1, rod 2, rod 3. Here anyway 200 is given for you, first and last. Here delta theta has to be 60 degree centigrade. As the heat is passing here, at this point x, temperature has to be 60 less when compared with 200. So, 200 minus 60, that is 140 degree centigrade. See here, this is 20. Here it must be 60 more so that it can flow, right? So, 20 plus 60, this is 80 degree centigrade. So, have you noticed the difference between this and this? This is 140, this is 80. Difference between 140 and 80 is also 60 degree centigrade. So, his question is, what is the temperatures at the junction x and y? So, at the junction x, it must be 140 degree centigrade as I have told you. At the other junction, it must be 80 degree centigrade. That is how we can solve the problem using, using the basic concepts of series connection. Only thing that I want you to understand is in series, rate of flow of the heat dq by dt is a same, dq by dt is a same. Resistance in series, you have a formula R1 plus R2. Resistance in parallel, you have a formula 1 by R parallel equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. These derivations I have made in the other videos, you can go through and identify how I have got the derivations itself. Though I have explained here, if you want a detailed derivation, you can just go there and find out. Thank you.